all right so what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel man it's your boy and we have some major news from the grand cross dev team in regards to the next major update so as most of you guys are aware by now the game has been kind of dead lately it's basically just pvp and new banners well it looks like it's about to kick up and kick up in a good way so the collaboration for the kof fighters is actually going to be happening sometime in the next two weeks so by the time shin banner disappears at the end of october and the beginning of november there's going to be a huge update and we are going to be getting the kof collab fighters now unlike the collabs that came before this is a collab that you don't want to miss out on so if you had thoughts of summoning and going hard on this banner for shin i would say skip that because you want to throw those diamonds on these characters because they are going to be light years better than shin and roxy for sure for sure right so let's talk about it with this collaboration we're gonna get the collab world conquest thing which is fine we're also gonna get four new characters which i'm not sure if most of you guys know but i'm a big fan of kof i really love king of fighters right and we're getting my boy keo we're getting my girl mai i am looking forward to roasting people with my z we're getting athena she's okay never really been the biggest Athena fan, but we're also getting Omega Rugo. Now, if you don't know anything about KOF or King of Fighters, King of Fighters is an old school fighting game, kind of like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighters, Tekken, etc. Right? It's a fighting game that most of us older people played back in the 90s, right? So it's making a big comeback. It's at its own game right now. And because Netmobile is the one that is in charge of that game, they actually are doing a collab and they're bringing over four of those units. I believe four of the most popular units. People love Athena, right? I personally am a big fan of Kyo and Mai. They're two of my favorite characters from the franchise. It's a shame that we didn't get my boy Rio, but it's okay. We're getting Omega Rugal. Just to give you guys a bit of backstory on these characters, um, Mai and Kyo, they're pretty much the protagonist. Um, Athena is just really, really popular. Omega Rugal, though, is the main bad guy, okay? He's super OP, and it looks like they're going to replicate that in Grand Cross. So unlike the previous collabs where you could basically skip over those units like the slime collab no 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 you're not gonna want to skip over omega rugu you're not gonna want to skip over kyo and maybe not even mai mai is waifu worthy and she definitely has a good kit athena is probably the worst one of the lot i'll go through their skill set and share my thoughts on it in a sec but that's the gist of it we are getting some new stages and they're even copying the old school layout <laughs> right which is pretty cool and down here we're going to be getting a final boss for okay so this is something very important right so we're getting a final boss for omega rugal which tells me that we could be seeing the release of gloxinium alongside the kof collab or maybe even before the kof collab because gloxinium on the jp version was actually from what i saw better than the uh, collab units for this fight right so even though the collab units are gonna get a stat buff on this fight with omega rugal based on what i saw in jp yeah galaxinia was way better for like ranking really really high so they might actually release galaxinia alongside this but that would be really shitty of them <laughs> because then you're, you're going to be summoning on this banner for the collab units that are limited time and then you're going to summon on the Glaxinia banner to rank higher in this event. That would be really, really shitty, but I wouldn't put it past them because it's money, right? So moving on, we are going to get some Knighthood boss changes. This boss definitely looks <laughs> pretty sick i'm not gonna lie but what i'm most interested about is the fact that your box cc if you get up to 3 million now will increase your hp 
by another 3%. So for me, because I built my box, I'm already pretty close to um, 3 million without even trying. So as soon as this lands, I'll get an extra 3%, which is pretty dope. So you guys should definitely be building up your box. And in case you guys don't know how to build your box up to get to 3 million, just keep in mind that you don't have to stay at 3 million or even 2 million or 500K, okay? Once you hit it there once and you unlock this buff, if you like go lower than that, the buff will remain. Basically, all you have to do is just unlock characters and put gear on them. Even if the gear is not leveled up, it will give you some CC, unlock their unique and stuff. If you guys want me to go in depth in another video, I can definitely do that, right? But this is something you should be actively working towards because today after reset, the um, gear farming will begin. Like you'll be having um, half off on free stages so you can farm for food or you can farm for gear. You should definitely be farming for gear if you're new because then you can take advantage of the salvage event that's going on to get more blue stones and stuff. For me, I'm probably going to be farming for food to get affinity items and all that stuff. Moving on, to wrap it up, they're going to be giving away 100 anvils, which I think eh, is kind of meh. They should have given away at least like 500 as a thank you for um, spending so much money on the game lately. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So moving on let's actually take a look at the units themselves because this is going to be a big thing right omega rugel is going to be a green unit now i know right away because lost vein is very very powerful you guys are going to think well he's going to die to lost vein da, 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 da. omega rugel from what i saw in jp is very 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 tanky and because health is freaking unique he's even more dangerous like he's not a character to be taken lightly because when the hero survives with hp below 50 percent he removes debuffs and fully heals hp and increases his base stats by 15 percent this is absolutely disgusting this is like one of the most broken passives in the game all right it's once per battle which is good because imagine if he like died or whatever and then goddess liz came back like bring him back and then they heal him up to full health and then, man it would just be a nightmare right but this is a broken ass passive this alone would make me want to summon for him right but then he has the same exact card the aoe pierce card as blue demon meliodas which means <sighs> if you don't have lilia you might want to get Lilia. You might want to get Rule because Pen is definitely going to come back, right? By the end of October, the beginning of November, yes, Lost Vane is still here and you're still going to have to fear critting on him. But it doesn't matter if you crit on him if you just kill him in one turn, right? Rugal, especially if you get this, this stat buff, bro, two Rugal cards and one Lost Vane card. Sorry, not Lost Vane, Lost Vane on the mine. One Blue Demon Meliodas card. <sighs> They're dead. They're just dead. Like, he's just so busted. Like, this card is not really that good because it, it lowers attack-related stats and it's only a single target. But at least it does immediate damage. And I guess if you use this on Lost Vein, right, after you crit on him and rank him up, you could make it so that he doesn't do that much damage on his charge card or um, his um, single target card. So that's not actually not bad, right? Moving on, we have this guy right here, Keel which is also a monster because of his unique that's that's the trend you're gonna notice they have really good unique so at the start of every turn applies two ignites for three turns now you can cleanse this blue king is pretty much on every team now right so i don't see this being the biggest threat at least i wouldn't see it being the biggest threat if this wasn't happening every turn are you gonna cleanse every turn that's going to waste a move and you're going to rely on RNG to give you a cleanse. And not to mention, if one turn goes by and you don't cleanse, you're taking 20% extra damage. Plus, for each ignite that's on the enemy, it reduces the damage dealt to allies by 5%. So not only are you going to take 20% more damage when this guy's on the enemy team, they're going to take less damage per ignite. This is such a good, unique... Right, and then he has code destruction over here, which as you can see, increases damage per debuff on the target, which is just absolutely <laughs> insane. Right, and then he has Scorch, and it increases damage dealt by 25% per ignite on the target. So 
two turns go by, you stack up some ignites, they're pretty much just gonna die. Kyo is gonna freaking melt. Kyo and Omega Rugal definitely got tier units. I'm telling you, you're gonna find so many uses for them, right? There's a lot of characters in the game, but not that many, right? But there's, a, there's, a, there's at least a couple on my mind that I think would work really, really well with Kyo's passive. One of which is Red Nunchuck Bond, right? Because of the weak point damage on his single target skill, you could definitely start seeing some play, but that would be a, a risky team to run because I think the one downside to one of these units is the fact that they are susceptible to attack seal, right? Whereas, yeah, Omega Rugu, he, um, uh, actually one card is a debuff card. So he's kind of like Lost Vein. Not, again, not Lost Vein. Lost Vein on the mind, bro. It's Lost Vein everywhere. He's kind of, he's unlike with, um, Blue Demon Meliodas, where you can't be attack seal because of his, um, unique. Rugu can be attack seal right so you can kind of shut him down this way to stop him from basically cleaving your whole team but he can still do some damage with this card but this card is not nearly as dangerous <laughs> as the cleave right so there's that uh moving on we have mai now mai seems like she's gonna be a blue version of red Escanor, where her unique is also really good right when the hero's skills are ranked up increases basic stats by 15 percent for two turns which is pretty cool because you can literally just merge a card and rank it up that way and then you get a stat buff that's actually pretty cool right and then she actually depletes ultimate gauge kind of like merlin and down here on her second card she actually has amplify right which is pretty cool the, the best thing about my is the fact that you can just combine a card and immediately get the buff on yourself and then attack same turn right so even if people try to like strip your buff so this <laughs> my anyways so even if people strip your buff you can just get the buff right back by just combining a card as long as you have two cards in your hand for her so a pretty cool character i do like my skill set i do think they should have given her some ignite stuff though because well i guess most of you guys may not know about my but my does have fire right kind of like kyo so kind of sad that they didn't give her any fire like well not fire but any ignite um last one is athena now, i'm not the biggest athena fan to be honest with you and i do think from all the um uniques she got the worst one but it is interesting we've never seen anything like this before to be honest all the uniques that we've seen so far are very unique we haven't seen them before right when allies defeat enemies on allies turn reduce all enemies ultimate move gauge by two orbs at the end of your turn in pvp so basically if you kill somebody on the team and they have ult up they immediately lose two gauge everybody loses two gauge no matter who you kill so you, you don't even need to attack the person or you don't need to drain the person that has ultimate so let's say you go up against Las Vegas Meliodas he rushes his ult and then let's say there's a Merlin on the field. Merlin, you can easily one turn Merlin with red units. So you don't even need to target the Lost Vein to take away his ultimate. You can just kill the Merlin and Lost Vein will by proxy lose two ult gauge just because of this unique. And this actually works even if she's in the back. Again, it's a very situational unique, right? You would only basically be playing <laughs> the character on the sub. Well, you can use her on the front line, but Come on, man. You have better options for Kyo and Rubo. You, you wouldn't want to put Athena on the front, right? Just stance cancel. That's kind of like whatever to me. All right? And then she has detonate. Eh, kind of like you, right? Stance cancel again. Um, the best thing about her is her unique and the fact it can work from the back, in my opinion, right? But that's just my opinion. Mai also has a pretty good ultimate too because when she ults, she increases the rank of all of her cards so if she rushes ult she can just rank up and get the buff and then attack right after and get the amplified damage on her second card which is pretty cool right moving on um let me see you did i miss anything for kyo let me see your ultimate my g oh wow <laughs> yeah i forgot his ultimate applies to ignites but it's it's fine because it's literally just his passive right it's literally just his passive you get one extra turn of ignites because it's the same two ignites for three turns yeah but 
yeah just imagine seeing all these ignites the best part about Kyo is you can apply all these ignites just to the enemy right whereas if you're using somebody like Malaskula yeah it's a double-edged sword you're getting the ignites on the enemy but they also have ignites on you if you don't attack with one unit for one turn yeah that, that kind of sucks right but this there's no drawbacks to this it's just you getting extra damage and damage reduction at the exact same time i am most definitely going for these units the best part about them is none of them seem to rely on alt levels right like you could get alt levels for them just for super awakening but you don't need to like get six six yeah i guess you'd go four six just so you have um exactly what you need to make sure you don't spend extra coins when um super awakening comes to uh global because in case you didn't know when we get super awakening you can super awaken a character even if they only had um one six but if you go to four six it will be cheaper to super awaken them assuming that everything that's on jp right now comes to global as is right but we're gonna wrap it up right here guys thank you so much for watching leave your thoughts in the comments are you excited for the collab i personally am if you guys have been keeping up with me man you know i've been waiting for the collab to come not because these units are god tier or nothing like that but just because i really really truly i'm a big fan of the uh, kof franchise so seeing just kill alone in this game <laughs> my too <laughs> makes me very happy so even if they were like the same tier as um levi Aaron and Mikasa, I would be happy, but these guys are definitely the best collab units so far. It just looks like every collab is just getting better and better in terms of the character. The slime characters, kind of like whatever. And then the AOT characters came in, raised the bar, and now here we are with the KOF characters raising the bar even further. I think what's happening here is each time the collab characters come in, they're basically matching where the game is at for the collab characters. Right, because if the slime characters were coming now, nobody would summon on the banner for them. That's just what it is, right? And people would barely want to summon on the banner for Levi and them, especially now that we have with Zeldris and stuff, right? Even though Levi can guarantee crits, and Zeldris cannot. Sad life. I'm gone though. Peace.